Welcome to Combo Fango today. We are joined by the writer, director of Allegoria Spider One, along with the co producer and star, Chrissy Fox. Yay! Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, we're excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here. All right, so tell us what is Allegoria all about? Well, not all about, save it. No, you don't want to give away it. any yes. spoilers or secrets. Briefly, uh, kind of, sort of tell us what it's about. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's briefly, kind of, sort of about the <laughs> anxieties of being a creative person. That, uh, you know, I say if you watch this film and you re relate to any of these characters, I'm very sorry. Um, <laughs> don't be thankful that you live a normal life. So, yeah, I mean, it really is, you know, uh, it's it's just about being uh, driven uh, in, you know, I, I was the more interviews I do, I realize that as a creative person, like you don't control your art, your art controls you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's a level of possession. And if there's nothing, you know, if possession isn't the most horrifying thing we could all imagine. I don't know what is. So this is really about that. I love that. It's a possession movie, just maybe yeah. not in the way that you would necessarily think. Exactly. <laughs> so I like the fact that you, it does touch upon anxieties and there's big themes of kind of like the anxieties that may, maybe a lot of us have. I don't know. Does ever, is this a normal feeling to have? I'm going to say yes. But the anxieties of kind of like imposter syndrome or feeling like not, not quite good enough or maybe like uninspired. So all of this kind of stuff layers, but it's like, it made me anxious, but it's also comforting in a way because it's like, oh, cool. I'm not the only one who has these like thoughts and it's like gets eaten alive sometimes by this. And also sure. you explore artists through these different mediums. Like we have a painter, we have a writer, we have musicians. So it wasn't just like this one thing. And this is an artist that does just this. And it's dedicated to that focal point. It was kind of cool to see that perspective and how it affects different people across this like spectrum of creativity. Yeah, and how that energy can get passed along. You know, I think this, you know, this movie is constructed as sort of a non-traditional anthology. You know, it's it, they they are separate stories, but they are indeed connected through character and circumstance. And but some of these some of these evil energies are passed on between people that haven't been met or been in the same room together, but it's passed on because, you know, this person bought the painting from this person or this person went to see the movie that this guy wrote. And so it kind of explores that idea of how these these this kind of um, this kind of manifestation can be can be passed along, and um, and yeah, and I think that you know a running theme in the in the movie as well is those moments. Yeah, you know, there's I think there's at least three scenes where the character maybe at least three scenes where characters are confronting their own image in the mirror, mm -hmm. and I think if there's ever a, a moment that we've all had is that, you know. Um, just looking back at yourself or yourself looking back at you and just, you know, contemplating who are you, where did that person go? How did you fuck up so bad? Whatever. It is. <laughs> and I think that, you know, I think that's a very relatable moment, whether you're an artist or not. Like, were you watching me this morning, you creep? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, that moment of like the deep eye contact with yourself in the mirror, like, come on, get it together. Let's go. You yeah. got this. All right. <laughs> I mean, I, it's really unrelatable. I don't really know what you're talking about. Yeah, but. <laughs> all together. Christy, what was the most relate? Like, I, I mean, you're in segments of this, but is there as a whole, was there one that just kind of like resonated with you more than the others? I think in a weird way, um, the character I played Brody, I felt really connected to her being an actress. I, I don't have quite the level of insecurity and torture that she did. And I certainly hope I would never date anyone as mean as Marcus, <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but I felt very connected to the struggle, uh, you know, because being an actor is really hard and just wanting to get there and to make it and to, and so I felt like incredibly sad when it gets to that ending scene that we don't want to give anything away, but when it gets to that with that character, I felt incredibly emotional. I felt like I didn't even really need to act. I was just super overwhelmed by everything that was happening to her. And yeah, I, I think that I saw a lot of myself within her in a weird way. So yeah, definitely her. But I think, you know, that's sort of the beauty of being an artist is you can see little pieces of yourself in all these characters, you know, right. and you're flawed and they're all flawed and nobody's perfect. So yeah, I think this film was really special being given what I do for a living and just the way I could connect to it. You do have a killer monologue in there. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's very, it's very intense. And it's like disturbing in, in ways that you want it to be disturbing, I'm imagining. But I'm like, you just, you fucking, you feel for this girl, you know? And it's like, there's, there's relatable elements, but also like just amplified to a whole nother level. Like I don't relate to that level of insecurity, but I'm like, so sad for this girl that does. Cause I'm like, Oh, like, honey, you should not be an actress. Like, this is not, yeah. like if that's, if <laughs> this is like, oh, this yeah. is your baseline, I'm like, they're going to eat you up. Like this is terrible. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, let's maybe, maybe what, what else do you like to do? Do you like accounting? Like maybe <laughs> <Yeah, totally. laughs> numbers are fun. It's a good time for everyone. I don't know. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you guys want to talk about like effects at all because there's some really cool, fun things happening there. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think, yeah, I think the effects in this film were some of the most. It's really cool because we like practical effects a lot. So everything was practical. All the monsters were practical. I'm sure Spider has a lot to say since he, you know, he came up with a lot of the the monster designs and stuff like that. But um, but getting to work with these great effects artists, Gitsy and Ashley and I got to actually become a monster and it was like a progression and that was really fun just getting to I don't know what it is but when I have watched myself I feel more comfortable looking like ugly and monstrous <laughs> and just like listening to myself have a normal conversation so that was really fun and um I think they did a fantastic job what do you think Spider? yeah I mean not that we could have ever afforded a digital monster but I don't, even <laughs> could, I don't think we would have gone that route I mean i I've always been, you know, I will buy into the cheapest rubber suit 1950s monster than the most advanced digital, you know, produced, but digitally, I just, it just, you know, it's a tangible thing. And, uh, but it was fun to try to come up with, you know, monsters or, you know, that represented what these people were going through. Mm -hmm. And so in particular, Marcus, he's a painter. So it's, I think it's suited, suiting, suitable that the monster almost looks like a dripping pile of paint. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, you know, what Chrissy turns into as an actress, which I think is, you know, because generally speaking, the actresses are, you know, meant to be attractive and pleasing to look at so that she manifests this horrible, <laughs> you know, vile spewing, you know, thing <laughs> is, is, it makes perfect sense. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, it, it was, was hot really, bile though, still delivering, yeah. bringing it, bringing it, it through really the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, was that? Uh, I don't know. I feel like that's that would be so fun. Like, I've never, I don't know if I could sit long enough to do like a transformation, but I just I look at it and I watch it, and that's the kind of shit that got me into this in the first place, right? Like, you're talking about like rubber suits and tangible monsters, and I'm like, yes, I live for that shit, I love it. So, when I see it, I'm like, this is just so much fun, and I love to see that shit. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's fun. It's I mean, I still get we we uh, recently visited uh, a, a friend of ours who works in that industry, and I and it just we walked into the studio and just the the smell of the rubber mask that was just like oh, it's like childhood, you know. Yeah. It's, just, you know <laughs> it's such an aesthetic to it that is so appealing. It just reminds me of yeah, like Halloween as a kid, and you know. Yeah, it does smell like Halloween. It's got that distinct kind of just like hits your nostrils. So to be able to, you know, to be able to make your own monsters is like, you know, childhood dream come true, right? 100%. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of childhood dreams come true and fun, segue, you have a movie <laughs> within a movie here. And it, I think you maybe yeah. weren't expecting people to react yeah. so much to that, but it is really fun. <laughs> and we've talked about how people were like, because you guys did the film festival circuit and people were really responding to that particular piece <laughs> yeah I mean we yeah we created a uh yeah there's a segment in one of this where the girls are watching a, a movie and we wanted to create our own fake you know intentionally bad you know sort of inspired by 80s slasher and we created a character called big baby <laughs> and big baby is becoming the star of the show apparently and like that it's like we're going to at some point be forced to make a big baby movie. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I've got a whole grand, I've got a whole grand plan because in, in one of the other segments, the screenwriting segment, Eddie Park is writing the movie, The Whistler. So I'm going to make a Whistler movie, a big mm -hmm. baby movie, and then we're going to have Whistler versus Big Baby. Oh, Hell yeah. yes. Welcome yeah. to the Allegoria multiverse. Yeah, exactly. I'm all of that. 
Anytime you can have a super soaker full of blood and be running around in the woods at night, it's like the best thing ever. Yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of that. And big baby, yeah. That's going to be my uh, birthday party theme next year, actually. Oh, good. Bring your super soakers of blood. <laughs> I fucked up. I should have been dressed as big baby for this interview. Yeah. Just turn on oh, the camera, man. like, you had the it. I had, <laughs> we gave you all the clues. <laughs> man um let's see what was kind of like the seed that planted this idea in the first place because I know it's it's different it's like vignettes it's kind of a mythology but what kind of kicked it off and then what kind of like made it spin into this thing where you're kind of interconnecting these stories yeah I mean it's, it's always been like it's, uh, it mentioned you know just being who I am I think I've always struggled with why am I doing this why am I trying to live this life? shouldn't I just go be a plumber like stop you know and uh it just but art has a way of like putting its claws in you and not letting you go and it's like it, it like I said it sort of is a controls you and I just thought that that was just such an interesting idea um in an idea that I I mean I'm sure it's been explored in movies but not not often so I was just like really excited to bring it into the horror world and the genre world um you know horror of the human kind you know mm -hmm. it's like it's uh it's it's um, very even though if even if you aren't an artist, I think you can you can step in this world and find ways to relate to these people. Um, but yeah, really, the seed of it all was just my my own personal experience of like waking up every day and just wondering what the next thing's going to be and how are you going to make it happen and are you good enough? Are you just been you know faking it this whole time? Are you you know are they going to eventually figure out you're a fraud or whatever you know so I just you know it just is a personal you know based in in personal feelings but then you know magnified to a ridiculous level yeah that's a really personal one though I feel like that's like I, I don't know it's harder to make things like that I feel like because it's like this level of vulnerability especially when you say like yeah it kind of stemmed from my own personal things and then you amplify that but like, like the seed of it is like a very genuine and true feeling and I think that's a really hard thing to just like literally put on display for everybody I think, yeah, yeah I mean I think it's a you know it's important to try to be this certain level even if you're making um the most outrageous horror film or science fiction film and there's got to be at some point you know at some point the center of the story has to be from a, a realistic relatable place mm -hmm. and if it can be your place then I think it's going to hopefully show through uh you know you know to the audience and they'll 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 think it's they'll feel they'll feel the authentic uh, the that it's authentic you know and, uh, mm -hmm. and and then go along for the ride I'm real excited to see what the core of big baby is going to be what is <laughs> what is the authentic heart of big baby gonna be? it could go so many ways really it really could <laughs> There could that be one something. I don't know I don't think that one would be so personal but maybe you, never, okay. never know. Can, you just haven't have to, really explored it yet you know it's there it's waiting for you I all have bad babysitters I, I could have some <laughs> repressed memory of some abusive babysitter somewhere along the line <laughs> What was it like getting to do like the festival circuit with this and sitting down with an actual audience? I feel like we're kind of getting back to that a little bit now. For a while, we didn't get to do that. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of actually go and experience this with an audience. What was that like? Yeah, it, uh, for me, it was um, really exciting. But, you know, in ner and it was I was nervous, you know, mm -hmm. to be honest, I was. But I, I found that to be like ex an exciting place to be, to be actually nervous about something that, right. you know, um, but then you get rewarded with with the reaction and the you know you know knock on wood so far a positive reaction to the film um so it just um it's it's always great to have new challenges in front of you and this is certainly one so to see it with even you know a, a handful of people or 100 people was just like kind of mind blowing yeah i think like there's nothing like being in a movie theater and feeling the audience and mm -hmm. feeling the reactions and you know I feel like that like I went with Angel to see the new Scream movie and <laughs> we are hardcore nerds and that feeling of being around people who love the movie too and are reacting so when it's a film that you're this close to that you made or you're in it's 
feeling like people react to all, like you don't know what people are going to respond to you don't know what's going to come across and so that was the most incredible feeling I thought and just being able to go to a movie theater again and right. then go to a movie theater and see a movie that we made was with your face on the screen great. like this yeah <laughs> that, that was a struggle again I like it better when I'm a monster but that's <laughs> fine <laughs> I feel that very deeply though. People are like, oh, you don't mind like being on camera. You do it. I'm like, it's not that I don't mind it. It's just about, I, I do it. It's, I have yeah. fun with it, but I don't want to have to sit and watch my face on a screen either though. Like me personally, I don't want to. the truth. You do it all the time. <laughs> Actually, I just, that's what I do at home. It's just, I just watch replays of my clips all the time. <laughs> Obnoxious. <laughs> what was your guys' favorite part of making this? You want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, I think well physic the actual shooting of it i have to say it's a toss up i love doing the monologue i i thought it was i felt a lot of pressure to make that pay off and spider told us at the beginning so we have very little time to shoot these films th that we do so we rehearse a lot and that was the one thing we never rehearsed and he's just like i wanted to feel really natural i don't want this to feel rehearsed and so when we did the scene it just we did it all in one take and it all just came out and it was just it felt very emotional and it was weird it's just like the way we like locked in in that moment that was really special just as an actor to get to do that and I also love shooting the um just the transformation stuff because that's super fun and I had whiplash for like four days so that was <laughs> cool. but I think making it overall just editing it together I think there's just moments from each each story and I just I love watching other actors especially actors that I really respect and this film has every single person is incredible in it so just getting to sit there and go through people's takes it, I was just like geeking out the whole time and, <laughs> and then getting to work with Spider and getting to be a part of his first film because he's a great director that trusts his actors so that's kind of everything you know and the fact that he trusts me to do post on this since that so that was really special awesome i love it yeah i mean i don't i, I second all those things <laughs> I mean, especially the part about working with me that was the best. yeah <laughs> but, um yeah i mean it, you know it really is it really is a the the struggle is the fun part you know the uncertainty of like can you pull this off is the fun part um it, it's you know sometimes they ask people ask what's the hardest part and it's like and i always say it's the night before you know you've, <laughs> pre you've prepared you've done everything you can you got everything ready to go locations locked after and then you're lying in bed going i'm gonna fuck this up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> but then once you get on set in the in the energy of the other people and the actors and the lights go up and you frame up that shot and then suddenly it becomes real and it's sink or swim and uh every part of it is fun you know but certainly uh certainly um dealing with working with such talented actors is like you know the, probably the best part of it all it's i all right <laughs> yeah. i mean bad actors are better but whatever <laughs> <laughs> that's all that I will work with. Yeah. Only. I refuse to do anything other than that. No, that's amazing. And I'm so excited for you guys. All right. Allegoria hits shutter August 2nd. Make sure you Ooh. check it out. Woo. We get to see possession in multiple kinds of forms. It's a good time. 